the noise you hear in the background is a noise we haven't heard uh, since uh, November the 14th when we left Riyadh because we've now reached the heart of Arabia, the centre of the capital city of Saudi Arabia, which is where Harry St. John Philby um, arrived with his camels after 15 days of travelling from the east coast, Alagair, where we started our own journey on November the 16th. So we arrived here on November the 30th, 1917, and we have to remember that he was here on a mission to meet an extraordinary man who the British felt they should support. And uh, Philby, on seeing the date palm groves of Riyadh below the final hill, um, was mightily relieved that his journey was over. Sadly for him, he arrived on a Friday, the day of prayer. And at the time, uh, Riyadh, which today has a population of nearly 8 million people, then had a population of less than 20,000. And the entire city was encircled by a thick mud brick wall with nine gates and all of those gates were shut so he and his men had to shelter under the shade of date palms on the outskirts of the city and wait for the prayer midday prayer to end and the gates to be flung open and then they entered into uh, into the city Philby writes in his book the heart of Arabia Shuffling off our sandals at the threshold, we entered a large square room to be received with much cordiality by a little old man, somewhat inclined to stoutness, sharp-featured and bright-eyed, who led us towards the cushioned settees at a corner of the room by an open window. By a sort of instinct, I became aware of another presence in the room, hidden at our entry by the central supporting column. A stately figure, tall and upright, clad in flowing robes of white, overlain by a mantle of light brown, with a kindly, manly face, standing apart as if from shyness. This was Ibn Saud himself. Abdulaziz Ibn Abdurrahman Ibn Faisal Al Saud, ruler of Wahhabi land. And the other man was his father. The chemistry was instant between Philby and Ibn Saud. Both men respected each other uh, hugely, uh, and it was to form, that initial meeting was to form a lifelong bond and a lifelong friendship. And if there was ever an expedition that helped shape a nation, it was Philby's Heart of Arabia expedition that we have been retracing over the past 14 days. Philby spent several days here in Riyadh, having conversations with Ibn Saud that lasted hour after hour after hour. He was supposed to then retrace his steps to Basra to report back to uh, his, his commanding officers, um, but uh, he, was, he, he saw the benefit of pushing west, continuing west, to prove to Ibn Saud that he did really have the allegiance of the tribes and the tribal areas that lay to the west of Riyadh. And we ourselves will push west after a break like Philby. We will be back here on January the 16th, ready to start the second leg of our own journey. In those days that he spent with Ibn Saud, uh, Philby wrote, It did not take me long to realise that Ibn Saud was a man of inexhaustible energy, a man who put the affairs of his state above all other considerations and spared neither himself nor his subordinates in the ordering thereof. Endowed with a splendid physique and with a stature rarely attained by Arabs, for he stands about six feet three inches and looks considerably taller by reason of the simple flowing robes which he wears. He restricts himself but to a few hours of sleep, perhaps four at night and two during the heat of the day. For the rest of the day, he is punctual in the observance of the appointed hours of prayer and for meetings. And the remaining hours are taken up by his duties as a leader. Audience followed audience with bewildering rapidity. And at the end of the fifth day of my stay, 
I calculated that of the 132 hours that had elapsed from my time of my arrival, I had spent no fewer than 34, more than one quarter of the whole period, in formal interviews with Ibn Saud, to say nothing of the time spent in informal discussions with his secretaries uh, at intervals between formal audiences to clear up points which had been raised or to prepare the ground for matters yet to be mooted. So for the expedition team now, we've just uh, parked our two vehicles outside the restored fort of Mazmak, which is in the heart of old Riyadh. And this is probably the area where Philby would have met Ibn Saud for those days and those hours. Um, for Philby, much discussion, much negotiation, much bartering. For us, we have two very dirty vehicles lots of very dirty filthy equipment none of us have had a shower in 14 or 15 days and uh, you know I'm not quite sure what the priority will be when we reach uh, when we reach Alan's apartment in downtown Riyadh but we've got a lot of work to do over the next uh, two or three days to unpack the vehicles get everything cleaned and ready for leg two which will start in six weeks time before uh, Anna flies back to Switzerland, I fly back to Oman, uh, Reem flies back to Jeddah, and uh, Alan can have a much needed rest and, uh, and catch up on his own work here in Riyadh.